Okay, let's talk about some of the nutritional deficiencies that can impact the eyes. And I'm going to talk about some different categories here and walk you through some things. And we're going to add more to the board. So um, gluten-induced nutritional deficiencies that can impact the eyes. There are a few on here like vitamin C and vitamin E um, that, are, that are super critical, more for their antioxidant function. And there are a lot of different antioxidants, but antioxidants help protect and preserve the function of the eye. And so it's important to understand that vitamin C, vitamin E, there's also some other things um, like astaxanthin, zeaxanthin. You'll see that zeaxanthin down here, but astaxanthin is another one. There are a number of plant-based phytonutrients or phytochemicals with very strong antioxidant properties that can protect the eye. And so we're talking about protection from the eye getting uh, aged, presbyopia, oh, aging eyes, right? As we get older, we tend to see a deterioration in our vision. Some people see that deterioration quicker than other people. And antioxidant status is a big reason why. And that's why it's important. I, I draw antioxidants on there because this can be measured. And in my opinion, if you're seeing a doctor, especially if you're seeing an eye doctor and he's telling you you've got presbyopia or, or you've got cataracts or you've got clouded lenses or whatever, you're probably because your antioxidant status is low. Now it can be measured and then subsequently you can supplement to support your antioxidant status. You can also eat better to support your antioxidant status, but it's very, very important, critical for eye function. We've got beta carotene on this list and uh, beta carotene, as I mentioned earlier, beta carotene is important because it's a precursor to vitamin A. Now, beta carotene is also an antioxidant, so in that regard, it plays that role. But vitamin A is where it's at when it comes to eye health. It's one of the most important eye-related nutrients, as I've mentioned before, vitamin A deficiencies linked to night blindness or nyctalopia. It's linked to cataract. It's linked to retinopathy. Um, it's linked to damage along the sclera of the eyes. That's the white of your eyes. It can create a vitamin A deficiency, can lead to spots that form on your eyes called Biteau's spots. It's like a, cl a cluster of whitish yellow, um, almost looks like a little tumor on the eye, but it's a big spot and that could be vitamin A deficiency. So if you look in the mirror and you've got that big white uh, cluster there, that, that's something that might just resolve with some vitamin A supplementation. It generally it takes three to four months of supplementation to start seeing correction and something like that. But beta carotene is a precursor to vitamin A. Most of the time people don't get adequate vitamin A in their diet because they don't directly eat vitamin A. Where do we get vitamin A in the diet? Um, aside from converting carot carotenoids, one of the best sources of vitamin A is liver. Another really good source is eggs. Um, the yolk, particularly the yolk of the egg, but liver and egg. Uh, most of you probably don't eat liver, um, which is the absolute hands down richest source of vitamin A. And if you're gluten sensitive and you have been for a number of years and you're just finding out, there's a strong likelihood you have vitamin A deficiency. I probably see this Again, this is a rough estimation, but in, in people that come to see me where we find them with gluten sensitivity, about 10% of the people that come to see me have a vitamin A deficiency. So that's about one in 10. It's not, that's, a, that's actually a pretty high number. Um, it's, not the, it's not the most common deficiency with gluten sensitivity. It's not like zinc, for example. Zinc is present in 67% or so of people with gluten sensitivity. Vitamin D is much more common. Iron deficiency is much more common. But vitamin A, quite common. Now here's something else. So we got this next nutrient on the board, zinc. Zinc is super important for eye health because why? One, because it's an antioxidant. Zinc runs an antioxidant system called SOD. That stands for superoxide dismutase. It's a very critical antioxidant system. But just as important with zinc, zinc produces something called RBP. What is that? That's retinol binding protein. Now, retinal binding protein, what does it do? It's a protein that floats around in your blood. And so, uh, you know, if this is your bloodstream, you got RBP inside um, your blood and it binds to vitamin A and it carries vitamin A down your bloodstream, you know, up 
up through your circulation, carries it directly to your eyes. So, so think of it like this. Zinc, okay, step one, we need zinc. Step two, we form RBP. RBP binds to vitamin A, carries vitamin A to your eyes. Without zinc, this can't happen efficiently, and you can become vitamin A deficient even in the presence of plenty of vitamin A in your diet. And that's important to understand because, again, zinc is a carrier. It's the taxi cab that shuttles vitamin A to your eyes to give your eyes what they need in terms of that nutrient. So when you're out of zinc, you're out of the ability to adequately produce retinal binding protein. Now, one of the other things that can affect RBP retinal binding protein is too much sugar. You heard me talk earlier about diabetes, but diabetes, the sugar... We'll, we'll do something called glycate. If you've ever heard me use that word before, glycate means it, it's like sugar. It's, it coats and makes things sticky, right? Just like if you poured syrup on the floor, it'd make the whole floor sticky. Well, if you pour too much sugar, if you have too high of a blood sugar in your blood, you'll glycate, okay, the proteins in your blood. And one of them, one of them that gets glycated is retinal binding protein. And so that affects the way retinal bi binding protein can bind to vitamin A, so it makes it less effective. So elevations in blood sugar can affect your ability to deliver vitamin A to the eyes as well. So these are, again, why, why I've got this list of nutrients on here. They're so important. And then we have lutein and zeaxanthin. And these are very, very important. Research has been showing now for a number of years that degenerative eye diseases of age are actually, in many cases, I don't want to say reversed, but improved. We actually see people improving their vision if they get core antioxidants, and zeaxanthin and lutein are two of those that have been really well studied. So again, uh, these ones are critical. There's a lot of great new research coming out on these and a lot of new eye formulas are coming out with, you'll see that in, in many supplemental eye formulas, lutein and zeaxanthine. We also know that omega-3 fatty acids are important for eye function and there's several reasons here. One of the biggest though has to do with the regulation of inflammation. We know that high levels or excessive levels of arachidonic acid, which is a type of fat, um, and also excessive levels of omega-6, um, creates an increase in the quantity of inflammation, and that's going to impact and affect the eyes. So that's one way we know omega-3 is important there. The other is through, this is one of your best natural... How do I want to put this? It's not a blood thinner, but it is in the sense that I'm going to, I'm going to put it as blood thinner, but really it's, it doesn't thin your blood. What it does is it maintains good thinness of your blood. Remember, omega-3 fats are an essential nutrient. They're essential, meaning your body can't survive or function without them. And a lot of people, like they get a clot or they, they have a heart problem, their doctor wants to put them on blood thinners, or a lot of times doctors want to recommend aspirin because it thins the blood. But a lot of the time, these people don't need aspirin. They, what they need is they need an essential nutrient that naturally keeps their blood thin. Remember, um, it's very, very important for blood viscosity. The, the eyes have some of the smallest blood vessels in your body, and so that's why they're impacted the most. They're impacted because that, those really, really small surface area blood vessels are affected more when the blood is thick. They're affected more when there's too much sugar in the blood causing an increased viscosity in the blood. So this is why the eyes are so impacted, why omega-3 is just so critical for normal, healthy eye function. We've got some other nutrients on here, and, and I will say this, copper, you know, I'm drawing a lot of antioxidants here. Copper is also an antioxidant. It also runs, helps the zinc run the superoxide dismutase system. But there's a there is a kind of trend between vitamin B12 folate and copper. And that trend has to do with the um, myelin, the myelin sheath, which is very, very important for eye function. Remember, your eye, if we kind of look at the back of your eye, let's make some room on the board here. 
Um, so, okay, so if this is your eye, this is your optic nerve. And that optic nerve needs a coating. It needs insulation around it. And so a lot of times we'll see eye deterioration in individuals that have what's known as demyelinization. And so this optic nerve, remember, it's, it transmits signals back and forth. So signals from the retina. Uh, the retina is actually this aspect, the, the back part of the eye. This is where the light, when the light comes in, to the eye, it hits the retina, and that is transmitted into a neurological signal that, that then travels up the optic nerve into the brain, into the uh, eye centers of the brain where it's translated so that we can see. And if we have deficiencies in B12 and folate and copper, remember nerve function, neurological function, very, very critical because these three nutrients help with that process then we can actually get deterioration of vision, neurological deterioration of the vision itself. So very, very important that we consider B12 folate and copper on this list of eye nutrients. Now there certainly are more nutrients we could add to this list. This is not, I don't wanna call this the end all be all list of nutrients that are important for eye function, but some of the most critical here. Um, other ones, if we're really, I mentioned blood thinning earlier, one of the great ways to also naturally um, thin the blood is ginkgo, ginkgo biloba. It um, works really, really well to help support good blood viscosity. Uh, bilberry is another very powerful antioxidant that's been shown in a number of research studies to benefit and aid the eye. We've also got um, nutrients like quercetin which is a bioflavonoid with very potent antioxidant functions that help support uh, eye, eye function as well. So again, we have, there are a lot of different nutrients that will help with this. Remember, if you're, if you're just kind of pot shot guessing, one of the most important things you can do is right here is just making sure if your eye doctor is telling you your vision is failing, ask them to measure your antioxidant status if it's low you want to consider some of these core antioxidants for the eye like lutein, zeaxanthin, vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, zinc, copper, ginkgo, quercetin. You can use other antioxidants like bilberry. You can use alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid is important here for the optic nerve preservation. Um, we've seen this a lot in studies on diabetics um, who have eye damage and neurological damage as a result of elevations in blood sugar, alpha lipoic acid helps preserve the integrity of that nerve from the damage of blood sugar. So again, a lot of important nutrients for eye function. Those are the ones I wanted to cover with you tonight. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.